Good morning and welcome back to Black Bear Forge. Today I thought we would try to finish our wing dividers or at least get them assembled and functional. We might do some ornamental filing and other things in a fourth video, but by the end of this video I hope to actually have a usable working tool. In the last video we did the fitting to get the head of the dividers all assembled and this doesn't really pivot nicely, it kind of hangs up. There's still a little bit of filing to do. But they do go together and they are snug, so I'm not going to do too much filing, just enough to clean it up, round up this head to make sure that it has clearance as it swings, and then we'll drill a hole and assemble them. After that, it's largely down to filing and fitting and adjusting and doing all that kind of stuff, and there will be a lot of that to do, so it's a lot of bench work once we get these things riveted together. So if I look at these and I see where it's hanging up. I can tell it's hanging up right there in that corner. So I'm going to need to knock that corner off on both sides of this outer head. And that might be all I have to do to get these to work right. I wouldn't mind cleaning up the inside of the notch just to make it look a little bit better. But I don't want to make them loose and sloppy, although we can't always go back to the forge and fix that if we do. There's a good chance that did everything I needed it to do right there for now. I also notice there's a, some rag on the inside here from the bad split, so I'm going to try and file that out. It still binds a little bit. Now you can rivet these together and work them hot like you do a pair of tongs and that will clean up a lot of problems. I've mentioned before that Peter Ross does a lot of things like this, both uh, friction compasses and wing compasses. And he makes all this look easy. Still just a little bit of a, a catch here, and the same place on this one. Unfortunately, I don't have real good thin files that are very coarse, so it is hard to get down in here. The better job you do forging, the less of this you'll have to do. So clearly this could have been a cleaner forging. I think those are getting close to a point where they will probably function well once they're riveted, heated, and worked. And then we'll finish rounding all that up. So you want to decide what will be the center of the finished head. You notice this hangs over and it's going to have to be filed or ground off. Things aren't necessarily perfect. You want to line up your slots as much as possible because that does matter in the long run, more so than a lot of things. So right there, it's real important that it's in the center line with the joint because that will show more than anything if you're off. And then we're going to go to the drill press and we're going to drill that hole. We made our pin quarter inch so we could drill a quarter inch hole. And then we're going to countersink it so we have a flush rivet.
So he was trying to buy a new countersink. That was pretty dull. So we have our dividers. We have our pin. It doesn't go through very well, but it does start. These are definitely going to need to be heated and worked, but I think we can go ahead and set that rivet first. I think I've got plenty on this side to set, and I'll cut it off the same here, and then we'll set it. We could probably do this rivet cold, but my preference would be to go ahead and heat it with a torch and do it hot. I think this just makes for a cleaner job of it, more likely to get it just right. Of course, do both sides. Now these are definitely going to be too tight to do anything with. So we're going to heat them up just like you would a pair of tongs, work them back and forth to get that freed up. Then it will be back to the vise and the files and the grinder and clean up that head, clean up the legs. And once we've done that, then we'll worry about the wing. Now to be able to grab both legs, I need to get the thing to start opening up a little bit. I'm just going to put a chisel in here and try not to deform anything. But that opens it up enough that I can grab these with two different pairs of tongs and start working them back and forth. Now be real careful not to bend it right through here. So if you need to heat it up more controlled, you might use just the torch right up in here and don't heat this at all, which is what I'm going to go do. And hopefully that will allow us to get that to open. Just go slow and be careful, and perseverance will pay off. In the long run, these only need to open about 90 degrees. You'll never use them that far open, and that's just to get the wing inserted. So that's plenty far open as far as I'm concerned. Just work these till they're cooled. If you need to heat them again, heat them again. In the long run, we'll put a little oil in there. And then to fix any bending or bowing issues, I'm just going to go ahead and put it back in the vise to bring that together. Again, very gently. That's really all we need to do. Everything else to clean this up will be done mostly cold now. Well, we have our assembled set of dividers, and they open a little bit beyond 90 degrees, which is all they need to open, just enough to get the wing in. In use, you'll probably never open them further than about here. But these are ugly. Completely functional tool. If you set the rivet tight enough, they would hold their, they would hold their setting and be a pair of friction dividers, and there's nothing wrong with friction dividers. They work just fine. But I made sure to work this until it was good and loose, because for wing dividers, it's the wing and the thumb screw that hold everything tight and keep it setting. But before we do the wing, and before we install the wing, I want to clean all this up. You can do all of this with a file. There's absolutely nothing wrong with this tool. It just takes a little longer to save a little time, both on the video and in my day, so I can get back to other things. I'm going to go ahead and take this to the belt grinder, and I'm going to clean it up there. Now, I also think that while I'm doing that, I'm going to go ahead and put a big bevel on this and probably go to the triangular shape that so many of these others have. I opted not to do that in a bottom swedge because some of the ones I have that are old have a 60 degree angle and I don't have a 60 degree bottom swedge. After looking at some more of my old ones, and, and in fact the Peter Ross dividers, they actually have a 90 degree triangle on the outside. Therefore, I could have just used a 90 degree V swedge or the step of the anvil, and that would have worked. But since I didn't do that, and I do like that detail, and because I have a grinder, and I don't have to do it all with a file, I'm going to go ahead and do that at the grinder and get these into a tool that I'm really proud of. 
So I know most of you don't have belt grinders. That's okay. You can do it with a file. You don't have to do any of this. I would at the very least clean up the head and make things smooth and straight and pleasant to work with, but they don't have to be shiny. They don't have to be bright and silver. It's okay to have an as-forged set of dividers. They will work just as well and still give you accurate measurements in the shop. I think that's enough grinding. I could probably finish these 100% on the grinder, take them up to a 600 grit finish, polish them on the buffer, and make them just sparkle. But they really don't need to. I just want to make them clean and smooth and free of hammer marks. And I'm going to go ahead and finish them with a file because that will also be more in keeping with the way the older ones were done. Almost all of my older ones, you can see signs of them being filed. Plus, a file will allow me to get some better detail around the head and things like that. So I'm just going to go over what I just ground, file it, and then I'm going to start working on the, the head and try and finish it up with a file. Then we'll get to the wing. And I probably won't show all of the filing because it all looks exactly the same and watching an hour of filing might be kind of boring. A little chilly in here to work without any heat, so I had to turn on the propane heater. I've gone ahead and put some layout blue on here just so we can see this better. I'm going to take another pair of compasses and I'm just going to scribe around here. I also put a little center punch mark in the middle of my rivet so I can get a, a nice scribe line. And that's what my ideal circle would look like for a perfectly round head. We probably won't achieve that, but I can do some more filing in here and bring this bevel back up into the circle on both sides and make it look a little bit better. Plus we can do some more filing and undercutting right around the circle just to give it a little bit more detail. Got that turned so you can see it better than I can see it. using the sharp edge of a half round file. We can cut down into that. We can work the circle back a little bit. So that makes that circle start to look a lot more round, and I think it's going to look better in the long run. I'm going to go just a little bit further. Just keep checking it often. Do whatever you got to do to make it look just right. also file onto this surface a little bit and that makes it a little bit better looking. Yeah, I don't know if you can see how this side then compares to this side but this is looking much better now. 
So I'll just keep going like that. A little bit of extra heat does help. But anyways, we have our dividers all filed clean and bright with a nice file finish. I went over them all with a second cut file so it's a little bit smoother than that. It, so it's a little smoother than that first pass was. And now we're ready to do some of the final work. We need to shape our wing so that it actually curves up like the wing on the old dividers does. And we'll need to measure from our pivot point to the slot that the wing travels in to find out what radius we need there. And we also need to drill a hole for the thumb screw. Now remember, this is a threaded, so you don't drill a hole the same size. You drill a hole appropriate for your tap. This is quarter inch fine thread or quarter by 28 threads per inch. So we need to look up what size tap drill that is. And we will drill a hole for that first so that once the wing is in, we don't have to worry about trying to drill that hole. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now, and then we'll measure it and shape our wing. Now we have to think about this a little bit. We've got one slot that was left small and tight, and another slot that was drifted out a little bit bigger. That's the one the wing will travel in. So that's the one the thumb screw goes in. Now the other choice you have to make is you want the thumb screw here or here, and it really doesn't matter the way the dividers are used, but it seems like almost all of the ones I have that are old ones have it on this side as opposed to being flipped over and putting it here, with the exception of the ones Peter Ross made, which are on this side, but he is also left-handed, so I don't know if that has anything to do with it. So we're going to go ahead and put it on this side. Now you don't want to crush that hole, so be very gentle center punching, just a little little mark you can find with the drill bit. That's all you need to do. So we can look on a little chart here to find out the right size drill bit. Quarter 28 drill bit uses a number three drill. Remember the thumb screw only comes in from one side, so don't drill all the way through. I'll take a countersink and just knock the sharp edge off of that. And then I'll file lightly on the inside to get the burr out of there. I'll just use a little needle file for that. Then we need to tap that. Put a little bit of oil on your, your tap. Of course, because it's cold in here, this is pretty thick. I need to find some cold weather oil for this stuff. Again, remember this tap is going to bottom out against the other side, so don't strip your threads out by trying to turn it all the way through the, the piece here. And then, of course, you can take it out to make sure that that's what's stopping it and it is so that should now hold our thumb screw and it does now the thumb screw really doesn't need to go in any further than this so if you want to trim it so that it's a tighter fit and there's less standoff you can do that now we can measure from the center of that hole to the little punch mark we made earlier. And we need to put a three and a quarter inch diameter radius from the center of this. And we're going to go to the anvil and we're going to do that. And I can just hook this on this pin. That'll leave a little bit of a straight section at the end. That's actually what I want. Because the, the part that goes into the leg of the divider needs to be straight. So this is thin and cools off quickly, so it'll take several heats. Stop everything! Boy, did I get that wrong. That's a three and a quarter inch radius, not a three and a quarter inch diameter, which is what the pipe will make. So we need to bend this over something twice as big. This needs to be bent over a six inch form, not a three inch form. Sorry for the confusion, but it became quite obvious partway through this bend that I was making it way too tight. 
Luckily, I also have a scrappy bit of pipe that's that size. It really pays to keep a whole bunch of little scrap sections of round and square tubing just for doing this kind of work. They, they come in really handy. This one doesn't have any kind of a mount for the anvil, so I can just put it in the vise. So we need to take some of the bend out of this because it's way too tight. Pretty easily done though. Something seems like it's not going quite the way it should be. Rethink what you're doing and find out where you made your mistake before you continue. Sometimes you just need to trust your intuition a little bit. Gut feelings can be real. Try to get this bin nice and smooth. And also make sure it's flat here. It really wants to ripple and wave there. So a lot of back and forth between flattening and then bringing it back and checking the curve. So now we check the wing and the dividers. It's looking pretty good. It doesn't quite come together here, so something's binding there. If I hold the wing in place, I can see that moving just a little bit. So there's some drag on there. Right here it's dragging on the top. So it sort of implies to me that the bend is a little bit too sharp through here. But it could be bent a little bit more here. My straight section is too straight. I'm going to try and do this cold. So I want to bend this section a little bit. And I want to straighten this section out if I can find a good place to do that. You can do a little bit of filing on the wing if you need to. And if you've got a little tiny file, you can get in this slot and you might need to file the top edge on the outside, maybe the bottom edge on the inside. Just a little fiddling and fussing. And I'm leaving this a little bit proud on the outside here because I'm going to want to put a head on this when we get it all assembled. So that still needs to bend a little bit. So we may end up going to the files to make this just a little bit smoother. Yep, I think I may have bent it too far now. The other thing we can do is go to the cone mandrel that has a bigger diameter on it, and that may help. Unfortunately, my smallest chainsaw file just doesn't quite fit where I need it to there. So I'm going to have to go to an even smaller needle file. This is hanging up on the top of the outside and the bottom of the inside. File the sidewalls a little bit, I might be able to get that chainsaw file in. With some perseverance, this now closes quite nicely, but it still drags. You can still see this swing a bit of an arc as it opens and closes. So with that in mind, what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat this up. I'll put it in the dividers just like I've got it here. Leave a little bit of a tail sticking out that'll become my rivet. I gotta do this pretty quick because it's cooling off the whole time. Then lock that in the vise to hold it. Hold the one jaw down while I open and close this and that should work it in and even out the bend. We hope. Like I say, I've gotta try and move fairly quickly here. 
make sure I put it in the right way. This may be more of a rehearsal at this point than it is the final fit. It's cooling off quickly. But if you hold one leg down, it is already moving a little bit easier. Now let's get it hot one more time. So having done this once, it should be a little bit easier the second time. I apologize if my hand is in your way. That's hotter than we had it the first time. I think that's going to do it. Now with the divider filed nice and pretty, we need to make sure this matches. The other thing I want to do, I think I want to do just a little decorative file work right at the end. I don't think you want anything in the middle. It might affect the way it operates and make it rough to open and close. But this very end, I think we can do just a little bit of decorative file work. And what I'm thinking is I'm going to drill two really small holes on either side and then I'm going to file a groove here and make that look like a little scroll in there. I don't actually want to split it and scroll it out because I don't want this any wider than the, the actual wing just in case I ever need to open this up and take the wing out. So I'm thinking holes that are perhaps an eighth inch and perhaps a little smaller. I'll compare a drill bit to this before I make my decision. I did go just with an eighth inch bit. I think it's going to work out just fine. with two holes almost touching there. I just want to take the file and create a groove that goes not all the way down. I don't want to cut these in half and connect that. What I just want to do is give the impression that I've got two little scrolls there. see what I'm doing in the camera or not. And this certainly isn't a requirement. It's just something I felt like doing on here. Now to complete that little illusion, I'm going to file in this way. And actually, I see another form happening here that I kind of like. Just cutting that in without connecting. I was actually going to connect to the hole there, but I kind of like it not connected. I could put a little mouth in here and make, pretend those are eyes, but I'm not going to. I kind of like that little detail just the way it is. The next thing I want to do is file this smooth. You don't really need to file the part that's going to be captive inside the fixed part of the, the dividers. I just need to worry about the rest of it. Sometimes the hardest part of any of this stuff is just holding it. So 
So this has been completely cleaned up. And it is ready now to go into the, the pair of dividers. Works much smoothly than it has previously. So we need to do a couple of things to attach this. One, it's going to get a little pin hole, and our pin that we made the first day we started will go in that hole and hold this so it can't move. But I also want to put a little head on it to cover up any of the, the ugliness of this slot here. So the first thing we want to do, I think we're going to do that with a torch. And I'm going to put this in the, the vise and hold it. This is one place where it's nice that this comes all the way off because I can open these way up. And I can work on that head and I'll use this as my heading tool and try real hard not to muck up all my nice clean file work. But if I have to, I can go back and fix that. And because this is so thin, it's going to be real easy to mushroom over, wrinkle up, and just make a mess out of. So I want to go real slow. And not get too much of it hot as I upset it. We use the cross pin to spread it lengthwise a little bit. So this is starting to bend over now. Like I say, this is really kind of fiddly and fussy. I'm going to take a butcher just because it'll fit right up under there. I'm going to heat it up and I'm going to push that back straight. That worked out real well. The pin is what will actually hold it in place. And that's going to need a little bit of filing and cleaning up itself. But that does tighten that in the hole. It, and it might stay, but it might not. And of course, I can see where the vice jaws left some prints that I'm going to have to file out. So I want to drill this for my little pin. Make sure it's centered. You don't want to accidentally drill through the side. That's better. Since it's a hand forged pin, make sure we know exactly what size drill bit we need for this. Looks like 5 30 seconds. And this one I do want to drill all the way through. And I'm going to want to make this a, another flush rivet, so Go ahead and countersink both sides. So we'll put our pin in and then we'll trim it off to make sure that it's, it's going to fit. But before we do anything else, let's make sure the dividers run smoothly and they do. Now we're going to have to reset this head a little bit because it has slipped some, but that'll give me a chance because there's a little gap here now. It'll give me a cleaner filing job to get that cleaned up. Then we'll reset it just lightly with a hammer. Then a final filing of the whole thing and it'll be pretty much done. This pin's small enough, I don't think I need to heat it up. But it doesn't hurt anything if you want to heat it up. Everything still works smoothly. The leg is good and solid. So I'm just going to clean up the profile of the rivet head or the peened over part of the leg there. Get that nice and straight and looking good. Reset it just lightly with a hammer. Then one last go around with files or grinders or buffers or whatever you want to do to clean up any of the marks, scratches, discolorations, whatever you got. I'm going to use a real fine file here. It has one edge that doesn't have any teeth so I won't mess up my divider leg, at least not too badly. 
while I file this. And just clean this up till it's as neat and uniform as you want it. You don't have to do any of this file stuff if you don't want to. I just think it makes it look better and it's a tool I'll be prouder of in the long run if I do these things. Okay, so just last minute filing and straightening and that's all that that needs. Our set of wing compasses is now completed. I didn't bother showing the last cleanup, that's another half an hour worth of a little tedious filing, some grinding, some finishing on the belt sander, just to try and clean everything up. And I may still do a little bit of work by hand with some hand sandpaper to clean up some rough spots that are hard to get to otherwise. But it's still a completely functional tool at this point. And really you don't need to do most of the filing steps that I did as long as everything fits. Now I said completed, there is one last little step that we need to take care of. And that is the tips don't quite come together when it's closed. And they should come together when it's closed. And I can look down this and I see one of them bows in ever so slightly, the other one bows out a little bit. So if I bow that one in, which is the moving leg, these should fit just fine. And to do that I'm going to use a leather pad underneath the leg and a rawhide mallet so I don't mess anything up. And just very gently, see I went too far there. So one advantage of mild steel is you can do some straightening like this. while they're cold, and with tool steel points you need to do it all a little bit sooner. You don't want to get too carried away though, you don't want little kinks and bumps and things like that. But I think that's pretty good. It is good if they come together right at the, at the very tip like that. And they should be fairly sharp, even though these aren't for scribing metal. They're, they will scratch a line in wood or on leather. So if you were trying to mark leather, you could certainly use that to mark a little line. It probably doesn't show on the camera, but it's very visible in person. But in any case, with the possible exception of some fine hand sanding and light finish work, and then maybe a few drops of oil in the joint and on the screw here, these are done. I don't typically put a finish on something like this. These will tarnish and patina over, over time. And if they're in a wood shop or someplace like that, people frequently lightly oil their tools and that's all it really needs. If they're going to be in the blacksmith shop, you might want to put a little bit of light wax or something. But I do like to leave them shiny like this just because it looks like a more refined tool. Again, you don't really have to do that. Now what did we end up with? We know we started with only 6 inches of bar or 150 millimeters. Remember this is part of the 150 millimeter challenge from Hereford College. We end up with about 260 millimeters long in the finished dividers. So we haven't quite doubled it, but we made six different parts for this out of that 150 millimeter piece. And that means it's 10 and a half inches long. So that was 3 quarter by 3 quarter by 6, or 20 by 20 by 150 millimeters. And all six pieces of this came out of it, both legs, the wing, the thumb screw, the rivet that holds the top together and is the pivot point, and the little rivet that holds the wing in. All of that came out of that one piece of bar. No new material was added. When we started, that bar weighed just a little bit under one pound. I know we're going to lose some material there. I don't know exactly how much we lost, so we're going to find out right now what we lost. We are now down to eight ounces. So in the long run, this is only half of the material we started with, even though we made six different pieces out of it. And a lot of that went to grinding, since I gr 
ground the bevels on here instead of forging them in. If we had forged them in, we might have saved a little bit of weight. But the challenge isn't to have all that bar left over, it's to make something out of that bar. So I think this fulfills that challenge need quite nicely. Somebody's going to ask, are these for sale? No, these are not for sale. These are actually be, I'm actually going to send these to Hereford College in England and they will be part of a show they're putting on. When the show's done, they'll send them back to me and then I'll decide if I'm going to keep them or if I'm going to sell them at that point. But this is the nicest pair of wing dividers or wing compasses that I've ever made. And I've only made two or three pairs previous to this. So it just stands to reason that you get a little bit better. In any case, I think I might keep these when they come back, so they probably won't show up on the Etsy shop. I hope you enjoyed this project. If you did, give it a thumbs up. By all means, go check out Hereford College's site. Check out Hereford Anvils on Instagram. They have a lot of this on there. And check out the 150 millimeter challenge on Instagram. That's hashtag 150 millimeter challenge. I'll put a li link down in the description so you can find that. Lots and lots of ideas. I think this is the only set of dividers that I've seen going into that challenge so far. Somebody else may say, hey, that's a good idea. I'm going to try my hand at that. So who knows when it's all said and done, what all is going to be there. But if you do Instagram, I strongly encourage you to go over and check that out. If you haven't done so already, I would love it if you hit that subscribe button. But then make time in your day to get out to your shop, make something, even if it isn't a set of dividers. But do so safely. Wear your safety glasses. We'll see you for the next one.